Greetings, one and all two universes. In this show, we will analyze the stats, weapons, and abilities of two fighters to see who would win in a battle to the death. Many people have predicted the outcome, so let's see who guessed right and who guessed wrong. And be sure to stay tuned after the episode so you can see the next fighters and make your predictions down in the comment section below or in a video response. And who knows, maybe your comment or video response could be featured in the very next episode. With all that said, let's meet our two fighters. Scorpion, the Flame of Combat, and Zuko. The Fire Lord. Which of these two heated martial artists will win in a battle to the death? This is Universes. Scorpion, the son of a ninja assassin. His early years basically amounted to, Hey Dad, I want to be a ninja assassin too. No son, don't be a ninja assassin. That is not the life for you. Haha, <laughs> take that Dad, I'm a ninja assassin now. Well, to be fair, he kind of had to do it to take care of his wife and kid, but the consequences of a murderous lifestyle that came with being a ninja assassin soon reared their ugly head, as Scorpion's entire clan was murdered, including his wife, kid, and even himself by who he assumed to be Sub-Zero. Turns out it was actually Quan Chi, a guy Scorpion met in the Nether Realm after he was killed, who brought him back to life and gave him all kinds of cool Nether powers. So as you can imagine, Scorpion wasn't happy. The worst part is that by the time he realized this, he had already killed the innocent Sub-Zero, Bihan. Fortunately though, he was able to make amends with Bihan's younger brother, and now with bridges repaired, Scorpion set out to get his revenge on Quan Chi. And he was able to do so with a sweet set of skills. Scorpion knows various forms of martial arts, including, but not limited to, Hapkido and Pai Gua. He's an excellent melee fighter on his own with these fighting styles, but don't forget he also has sweet nether powers. This allows Scorpion to manipulate fire, teleport, and even create portals that can send his foes to the nether realm. He can even go down there with his victims to finish the fight, growing stronger the longer he stays. He's also technically undead, so killing him a second time would take quite a bit of extra work. Aside from being a flaming zombie skeleton ninja assassin who can chuck fireballs, Scorpion is also a weapons master. He knows Mugai Ryu, which basically means he can handle any sword pretty easily with great skill. He can use a long sword, or a tiny ninja sword that is easier to take on missions. Or how about just a giant axe? But we can't forget Scorpion's most iconic weapon of all time, his kunai spear. It's a sharp knife attached to a metal rope that he uses to grapple his enemies and pull them towards him for a follow-up attack. One of his deadliest tools, but not his most deadly. Wait till you see some of the things Scorpion can do. First, let's take a look at his fire. Now you may assume that it isn't impressive, I mean he's just burning people, right? It's just really hot and nothing else, right? Well, believe it or not, to vaporize a human like this, it requires 2.99 gigajoules. This translates to 0.7 tons of TNT, enough to destroy a building. Wait, does that mean we as humans technically have building level durability? Huh. Anyways, this feat doesn't seem too surprising when you consider what else Scorpion can do. Just look at all his fatalities. He's able to casually rip off limbs, pull out spines, and even snap the heads off of his foes. Scorpion is also strong enough to chop through several tough materials, like a pile of bricks, a golden statue, and even titanium. His hands must be pretty tough, as well as the rest of his body. Sure, Scorpion has had many losses in his career, but that just shows how tough he is by the fact that he's still alive. Many of the opponents he's been able to rival have shown supersonic speeds and building level attacking capabilities. So let's see if he's prepared for Zuko. It's kind of funny how Zuko is just about the exact opposite of Scorpion in terms of story. He starts off worse, but ends up better. You'll see what I mean. He was born the son of the Fire Nation's leader, a quite abusive father. Zuko speaking out when he shouldn't have resulted in him being forced to duel his father, which led to the massive scar you see there on his face. Afterwards, he was banished from the Fire Nation with the only way of being welcomed back and having his honor restored being to capture the Avatar, the only threat to his father's plans of world domination. He hunted the Avatar for three long years while battling his own inner struggles until coming to the conclusion that he can shape his own destiny and restore honor on his own. In fact, he even teamed up with the Avatar to prove this, helping in the defeat of his father. Zuko was able to help through his incredible firebending skills. Firebenders have the ability to manipulate and create flames in just about any way possible. He can shoot blasts and fireballs from his fists, wave his arms to create large walls of fire, he can even shoot it out of his feet. 
Using his martial arts skills, he can mix his firebending capabilities with his fighting capabilities to perform some crazy moves. He can sweep opponents off their feet or trip them with a powerful wave. Firebenders can also generate and redirect bolts of lightning. However, this is very risky. When redirecting lightning, it has a chance of striking your heart, killing the victim. Zuko, however, seems to have perfected the art of lightning redirection, even using it against his father. Other unique uses of firebending include heating up metal to insane levels, burning those who touch it, or they can just flat out melt metal in general. Firebending isn't his only skill though. There was a time where Zuko had to keep his identity as a firebender hidden, so he couldn't rely on it for combat. Luckily, Zuko has military training and is very skilled with swords. He has been able to win several brawls and sword fights without having to resort to firebending. Be careful when he does use his firebending though, it's dangerous. When it comes to the Avatarverse, many characters are labeled as glass cannons. Their bending can showcase some incredible feats, but physically they don't appear to be on the same level. Zuko, however, appears to be the exception. He's been able to endure several firebending attacks that can blow open stone walls the size of skyscrapers, and even tanked his own warship basically exploding in his face. This was no accident either. This was an assassination attempt on Zuko's own life, and he was perfectly fine the very next day with only minor cuts and bruises. It didn't even leave a scar like his father did. This likely means that the fire used in firebending is even more intense than that explosion. He's won several sword fights, battled his way through some of the Fire Nation soldiers, and even outran his own sister's lightning. This was during Sosin's Comet too, which strengthens firebending capabilities, meaning that lightning was likely faster and stronger than usual. And he still outpaced it! But is it enough to prepare Zuko for Mortal Kombat? Let's take a look at your predictions while I calculate the results. Hey what's up guys, it's ZDogS here bringing you another universe's prediction, but today I thought I'd do something a bit different. I'm going to do it solo, and I'm going to do like a different editing style, so I hope you enjoy it, and today I'm going to be predicting Zuko vs. Scorpion, which is a pretty hype matchup. I have wanted to see someone do this as a versus battle, like as a research battle for a while now, so I'm excited Leo's doing it, and I'm going to go with Scorpion for the victory. Now, I will say Zuko does have an advantage in speed as he's been able to redirect lightning before, and with his firebending, he should be able to handle Scorpion's fire um, no matter how much he throws at him. Scorpion, however, I do feel has an arsenal advantage um, with his um, with his chain, his swords, his hellspawn demon. He should be able to overwhelm Zuko with the amount of abilities he has, while, while Zuko just has his plain old fire launching and fire bending abilities. Now in strength, Scorpion should actually take it pretty easily. As Zuko doesn't really fight hand to hand that often. I mean he does, but he doesn't well he sometimes lands physical hits, but like not as often as Scorpion. And Scorpion with his Kunai and Chin was strong enough to rip someone's head off. Both can are fairly good at uh, hands on fighting as Scorpion's a ninja and Zuko and Zuko has faced many experienced beings before. But, the main reason why I'm going with Scorpion is his ability to send people to the Nether Realm, where all his stats get improved. And if Scorpion sends Zuko to the Nether Realm, he, not only will he have another way out, but, but he might even have trouble redirecting Scorpion's fire, like I said. Because like I said, Scor Scorpion's stats all increase when he's in the Nether Realm. And if this takes away one of Zuko's most important advantages in this fight, he's gonna be screwed. So yeah, those are my thoughts on Zuko vs. Scorpion. I will think... I do... Nah. I do think Scorpion takes it fairly easily, but I want to know what you guys think about it. Let me know in the comments... Well, in Leo's video too, because, you know, that's where all the predictions are gonna be shown off. But I want to know, who, do you, who are you guys rooting for? Are you guys rooting for Zuko... From Avatar The Last Airbender or Scorpion of Mortal Kombat. I'm going Scorpion for all the reasons I have listed. And I hope you guys enjoyed the video. I hope you guys enjoyed this new prediction video style. And Leo, I hope you see this video and I hope you enjoyed it. And see you guys in the next one. Next time you know versus Scorpion for Zuko. In my opponent, I don't think Zuko will be the winner. First is that, is that 
Suko will be storming Scorpion so badly. Scorpion is able to scale to the likes of Raiden, who can destroy a temple with a single blast. Which puts him a time plus level. And Suko is able to scale to an even stronger than Aang, the same guy who left the entire city with his banding. And as for speed, Scorpion is able to dodge bullets, missiles, even able to keep up with Raiden who can move at hypersonic speeds. As for Suko, he is able to redirect and even keep up with Aang who can redirect lightning. And which puts it at high hypersonic to massively hypersonic speeds, more than either speed blood Scorpion. As for Things like skills and experience, I would say that both are equal in skills. Spin, both are able to fight the hand to hand, no martial arts, and skill that swap plays. And, but experience, will, I will have to give to Scorpion since he's older and has fights more opponents than Suko does. But intelligence, I would give a really, really slight edge to Suko since he's the only one able to lead an entire army. Even though both are expert tacticians and knows to use the environment to their advantage. But other advantage for Scorpion is his arsenals. Both are, have swords in close quarters combat. Those cancel each other out, but as a fire options, Scorpion uses Hellfire and Suko only uses regular virus, which Hellfire means burn your soul. And Suko's fire will not do a damn thing to Scorpion since he is immune to fire attacks. And also, Scorpion is able to teleport. That gives him harder for Suko to hit, but he eventually does. The only way for Scorpion to win is try to like teleport him to hell. But one, he will need to catch him first, which Suko will be fast enough to dodge it. Second of all, uh, even if you catch him, the hell is full of fires, which Suko can just control every fire there and then use it on Scorpion, even though. Even if you think that the hell, the fire in hell will not hurt him, Suko will be just getting rid of them by throwing them away, or uh, something like that, I don't know. You know. So I think the winner will be Suko. And the results are in. The winner is... Zuko! I know, I know, the underdog won again, but hey, I didn't plan it this way. I honestly thought Scorpion would win when I came up with the matchup idea. Mortal Kombat deserves a real win in Versus. Sadly, this just wasn't it. Now, the first thing a lot of people are going to bring up is the fire. Scorpion appears to be very durable against it, and his skull is literally surrounded in flames sometimes. But that's likely because it's magical nether realm fire or whatever, it doesn't hurt him. It doesn't mean he's immune to all fire no matter how powerful. That's a No Limits fallacy. As we can see, Scorpion's greatest feat is building level by being able to vaporize human bodies with his fire. But, we've already seen Zuko tank the same amount of force when his warship exploded and all he ended up with were a few cuts and bruises. Since firebending has done more damage to him than that explosion, Zuko's firebending should also be above that level at least. Undead or not, Scorpion wouldn't be able to take much of that fire before losing, especially since Zuko is a master at manipulating it. Scorpion teleporting and shooting fireballs is nothing compared to what Zuko has done, even without Sozin's Comet powering him up. But there is one ace in the hole that many people think Scorpion has, and that would be his ability to drag people down to the Nether Realm. But the thing is, he never actually uses this ability mid-fight. He only uses it when foes are stunned and open to fatalities, or when he can catch them off guard. Even if he were to use it in the middle of battle, his supersonic speeds are nothing compared to Zuko's speed blitzing lightning feats. Sorry, but Scorpion's SWEET NINJA SKILLS don't automatically make him faster than anyone. It's even debatable who's more skilled. Scorpion has been alive longer, giving him the experience advantage by default, and he's more used to working with weapons, but Zuko has military training, has taken out firebending soldiers without using any firebending himself, and even defeated a master firebender before he had even mastered the basics himself. Yes, Scorpion may be more violent. 
But what does that really mean? He can rip out spines and break bones, but the force required to do that isn't impressive at all in the realm of fiction, especially when compared to Zuko. Scorpion just can't take the heat of battle. The winner is... Zuko. All hail Fire Lord Zuko! Get ready for the next battle! What are you doing, doggy? What what are you doing, dog? What are you doing? Whoa! Really like those leaves, huh? Anyways, what's up guys? Leopold the Brave here. I can't think of a trailer. Um, so this is what you're getting. The next matchup is trapped inside the sun. So I will explode the sun! Ha! Ah! 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 Did, 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 did it work?